Hey guys, Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project and today, or I should say this evening because today is ending, I'm going to make a batch of crockpot soap. This is soap made in the slow cooker and we're going to go through a series of different types of soap making processes in the next weeks and months here. So I've already made some soap using the stovetop the other day and now we're going to make crockpot soap and I'll show you many ways and variations of how to make soaps different ways to heat it and cook it but for today we're using the slow cooker and what we're making today is called a hot process soap the previous video I did was cold process soap which means that very low heat was used to make the soap and then it was put into forms and then it has to cure for six to eight weeks before you can use it. With the uh, hot process what we're going to do now is make soap that's immediately usable as soon as the soap hardens which means tomorrow we can be bathing in our own homemade soap. So let's get things together here. Now the things you need obviously are a slow cooker, crock pot, some oil and we're gonna do a mixture of oils today I don't know if you can see but I've got here some um, organic first cold processed olive oil so we're gonna make a mixture of vegetable oil olive oil and coconut oil in our soap now the olive oil and the coconut oil have good benefits for your skin and give you more lather and a firmer bar of soap and the vegetable oil is just cheap. So we're going to use half vegetable and other half, uh, a quarter of this and a quarter of this. You're going to need a kitchen scale and some lye. The scale is to weigh out your lye. You're going to need a glass Pyrex measuring cup to measure out your liquids and to pour your lye into the water. You need Pyrex because it's got to be able to take the heat once you put lye into water it gets very very hot and I have some utensils I went and got you're gonna need some stainless steel or nylon plastic utensils whatever this is for uh, spreading the soap in the form later on okay but we'll get to that later and you need some utensils for scooping out your soap from the container you need a thermometer, a candy thermometer. And today, in the past, I've always hand mixed my soaps and it takes forever, it takes hours. Today, I've got a stick blender, which is gonna make the soap making process go very nice and quickly in comparison to hand stirring. Now, for making soap and to find the recipes, Go ahead and check out the article below. I'll have the recipe in the in the article, in the link in the video description, and in the comments for the uh, how to make your soap. There's only three normal ingredients involved, and it's very simple. There's water, oil, and lye is your, your basic soap. So check it out, read the article for all the details in case this gets complicated for you. Um, this is gonna be a little bit more complex because we're gonna mix up some different oils. My basic batch requires 16 ounces of oil. So I've got to find the ounces measurement here. And I'm going to put 16 ounces of vegetable oil in here. All right. And then I'm going to bring that up with the, I want to add another eight ounces of coconut oil. I'm going to put it all in here together so it's easier to measure. I'll bring up the volume that way because the coconut oil is more of a solid at room temperature. So I hope you can see everything I'm doing. Sorry that the light is behind me. It's the only light we got right here. So uh, up to 24. Oh wow, that's rock hard. Isn't that funny? Because it feels hot in here to me. 
All right, this is going to take me a minute. I'm going to get the, uh, the coconut oil out of the container, and I won't bore you with that. Let's rock hard at room temperature. Okay, now I'm going to bring it up to 32 ounces with the olive oil. So 16 ounces of vegetable oil, 8 ounces of coconut oil, and 8 ounces of olive oil will give us a really good high quality soap. So we'll set those aside. Now I'm going to put that, all the oil mixture, in the crock pot. And then I'm going to plug it in. So I've got to stand up for this. I'll plug it in and turn on the heat. All that goes in here. Plug this in while I'm waiting for that to drip out. Now, it's best to measure your oils out first, because then you can use the same measuring cup. Now I'm going to turn this on low, get that going, set it aside. Now I can use the same measuring cup and get seven and a half ounces of water. Actually, I'm doing a double batch, so it's going to be 14 ounces of water. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, now I'm going to use a mailing envelope on my scale here to measure out four ounces of lye. I'm doing a double batch, and it would generally be two ounces of lye for a batch. Now, at your discretion, you can use gloves here when working with lye and safety goggles and protective clothing. I'm very comfortable working with this, and therefore I do not. If you get some on you, rinse it off with some water, and everything will be fine. Just don't get it in your eyes. Okay, I hope YouTube doesn't block my video for saying that word. My last video on soap got blocked for saying the word bly or something like that. I don't know. Alright, so measure four ounces. I've got to turn myself around here so I can see better. Four ounces is quite a largish pile here. There's my scale. Three, four, four ounces of lye for a double batch. Oops. Tiny, tiny, tiny bit too much. All right, close that off because it absorbs moisture right fast. Now, I need a coffee coaster or something here. Something I didn't have on hand. Put your Pyrex on a coaster or something because the lye, when you mix it into the water, do it slowly and stir it as you go because it gets hot. It's going to get very hot as you work with it, okay? A little bit at a time, stir that up. It's going to start getting very hot and steaming. Be very careful as you go. Never put water into lye. Always put lye into water for safety reasons, which I cannot mention. Read the article for all details. YouTube's automatic uh, advertising filter is a little bit oversensitive right now, so it might sound weird, some of the things I avoid saying anymore. Okay, there is, let's get in there, there's the lye. And like I said, just, just work careful. If you get any on you, wipe it off with, or wash it off with water. Now that's going to get really hot to touch as we go. Okay, and it's, as it continues working in there, it's going to get really, really hot. It should start steaming here in a few minutes. Alright, I don't feel any grains left on the bottom of that, so... There, it's getting really, really hot now. 
it should reach 150 to 100 degrees so it's not comfortable to touch it's it gets hot it gets hot all right so now I'm gonna let that sit a few minutes Put this on here and we're gonna go look at our oils in the crock pot I'm gonna give that a stir and I'm just gonna use a spoon I've got here because it's all gonna go in the mix anyway is that warming up turn it on high to heat it up a little faster yeah it's warming up I want to heat those oils let me grab the camera I'll show you here okay well that is cooling down we don't want to have it too hot now, this is heating up and once that coconut oil is dissolved entirely then we can put the lye and water mixture in here doesn't look like much in that crock pot once you put it all in there so I'm going to stir this up as it heats up and we'll uh, we'll get all that coconut oil melted now somebody asked me once if it's if the oils are going to mix okay and yeah still mix the three different oils will mix just fine it's not going to be a problem especially in the uh, soap making process everything's going to blend in just nicely and we'll be back in a few minutes okay guys the lye has cooled down a little bit the oil has heated up and the coconut oil has melted so now I'm going to pour in the lye mixture to the, the lye and water mixture into the oil mixture slowly stirring it as I go be slow now you whoops yeah that's why I'm trying to say be slow you don't want any chunks getting in there or splat, uh, what do I call it, splashes. Another good reason to use a deep pot. Nothing came out. And you'll see the color changing right away. The oil and lye are mixing and it's becoming soap already. That fast. Some of it is already turning to soap as you go and there's a uh, soapy residue on top the color of it looks different okay and then stir that in and then I want to mix that thoroughly and then I'll get out the stick blender so I'm just going to continue stirring this for a minute and we'll be back in a few minutes with a stick blender and start making some serious soap now the stick blender you want to run on the low set speed setting until you get trace. Um, this one here says only to run it for one minute at a time. So I'm going to continue this. You can see the color changing. I'm going to run this for a minute and then let the machine sit for a while and we'll continue this on until we get trace. Now I've mixed for a minute and you can see the color of the soap has changed. Okay guys, I've done three passes with a stick blender stirring in between and you can see it's starting to thicken and the color has definitely changed considerably and um, the consistency is different it's the way it when you stir the swirly patterns start to stay behind a little bit longer as it thickens so I do a little bit of mixing with uh, stirring by hand and stirring with a stick blender because the stick blender I have says you can only run it for a minute at a time so I let it rest and I stir with my hand it takes a little bit longer that way but it should be done in about 15 minutes this part of the process guys I'm just sticking this in here and turn it on it's getting thicker see how it, 
See how now it doesn't really flow like it did. trace here pretty soon. I can tell it's getting oatmeal looking like. thicker. There it is. Alright, now it's really sticking to the stick blender. I'm going to show you the surface of that in a minute here, a close-up. See how it's all sludgy looking? We just about to got trace. So, just about Trace is when you pull the spatula or stirring spoon or whatever out and it sort of sticks. It doesn't run off like a liquid anymore. We're almost there. We'll be, we'll be there in a minute. Okay, now it looks like applesauce. I stirred it again for a minute. And yes, it's all gloppy. Alright, now comes the next phase in the process. We're going to put the lid on this, and I'm going to turn it down to medium. This only has two uh, settings, and I'm going to cook this until it gels, which means it starts to turn clear again. And then, after that point, we don't do much at this time. We just leave it in here and let the heat do the work from this point on. And it's going to continue cooking out the lye. The lye and oil will continue mixing until there's no raw lye left. And I'll know that by doing what's called the zap test, by touching it to my tongue. And any of you who've ever had a 9-volt battery touched to their tongue know the zap that you get. And by doing that with the soap, you'll get the exact same experience. It doesn't hurt you at all. It's the way you test to see if the soap is done. So... I'm just going to stir a minute longer and then um, we'll cover this up and let it cook. And that could take time. That just all depends on the crock pot you're using. I gave it just one more stir. Look at that. Thick. Just like a thick applesauce now. And now I bake it. Close it up and let it cook until we hit the gel phase and then we start testing for zap. And you just cook it until it's done. Now the soap's getting a more gooey consistency as it's cooking. Now again, I have my cooker on the on the low setting actually, and uh, some people advise putting it on high, but for mine, this is sufficient on low. I'm gonna let it cook a little longer. I just check it to stir it occasionally and that's it. Check its consistency. It's almost like a bowl of uh, jello now. Do you see how it wiggles? It's pretty cool. It's like jello. Hey guys, time has passed. 
I haven't kept track. Oh, looks like I think. Oh, weird. A little bit of a crusty surface. Look at how it stands up. So I think we've passed the gel phase, which I would have liked to have shown you. Then growing right into the final soap stage. We had dinner in the meantime. So I'll stir that up. I think we're pretty much there. I'm going to do a zap test here in a minute. So I'll set the camera on the tripod. Stir this up. And uh, it looks like soap now. I'm thinking it's just probably there. Be back in a minute. Alright guys. It looks like it's ready. It's really thick looking. Stir this up. It definitely looks like soap. Once I start to put this into the forms, I'll have to move quick because the stuff hardens up really fast once you get going. So let's do the zap test. Let's take a little bit of here and see if there's any uh, zap. If it feels like a 9 volt battery, then uh, you got to cook it some, a little bit longer. If it doesn't, then it's ready to be put into the forms. So let's see here. I'm going to touch it to my tongue. Nothing. Nothing at all. This is pure soap. All the lye has been processed out and it's ready to put in the forms. So I'll be right back with the next step. Okay guys, I am going to unplug this and spoon it into my silicone forms. I have to unplug it because the cord is too short. Now I've got to work very, very rapidly. So forgive me if I get in your way with the uh, my work. It's got to be done so fast because the soap's going to solidify as soon as it enters that form, that mold. As soon as it comes out of the heat, it starts to solidify. See, it's already getting thicker. I hope I'm not in your way. It's already thickening as I work. It's so fast, once you remove that from the heat, You only got a couple minutes to work with once you remove that from the heat. Now there's some residue in there. I'm going to try to scrape it out real fast and get it into the form. I, I Forgive me if I'm in your way. This is awkward. I don't know what all you can see and I'm working quickly. Okay. Now, all right. I thought they would come up above the level of the form, so I'm just trying to try to smooth that out in here as good as I can. The uh, spatula that I bought for this purpose is not going to be large enough. Actually, I'm doing pretty good. With this crock pot method, it stays warm enough pretty long, so I'm, I'm doing okay here with forming it. I haven't ever had it that good. This is the absolute best I've ever had with trying to form the soap. But as good as I'm going to get it. I think I can be happy with that. Well, there you go, guys. There's a bar of soap. It's got to sit and dry, um, and harden, I mean, and cure, and then we will have a batch of soap that's ready to use right now. Well, guys, we'll let this sit overnight, and we'll knock it out of the forms tomorrow, so we'll see you guys later. Hey, guys. I had this in the refrigerator to firm up a little bit more overnight, or, I mean, this morning for a couple hours. It was a little bit soft to the touch yet, and if you put it in the refrigerator, it'll firm it up so you can pull it out of the form and cut it. Because the sooner you can cut it, the sooner it can cure fully. Now this stuff is already soap and usable right away, but the difference is, it uh, just has to dry, is all in this case. or firm up. It's still soft.
So I'm going to see if I can get this out of the silicone form and onto the table here. Okay guys, there's the soap out of its mold now. And I'm going to cut it into blocks. Try to wipe the soap off my fingers. Okay guys, I've got a 10 inch bar and I'm going to score this. There's half a bar right there. I'm going to make marks on this where I'm going to put the cuts. I'm going to cut them in one inch bars. Alright? So, literally going to just score this at one inch intervals. Okay, now I'm going to cut our little soap blocks. Pressing firmly and evenly and straight down. Well, that's a clean looking cut if I can get this off well. Look at that, that's a clean cut. Now obviously, the soap has to cure for a while. to firm up before we can really use it. You could use it today and I have miniature soap I'll show you here when I'm done cutting that I will use today and I'll tell you about it in my next daily video. I'm probably just giving an update and a comment on this video. It's sticky. It's making some clean cuts when it's soft like this really easy to cut when it's soft like this alright well I'm going to finish cutting this and we'll be back in a minute alright guys we have ten happy little bars of soap and one little baby bar of soap which was the scrapings from the pot that I cooked it in and off the utensils which I will use today in my bathing I use this for washing my hair, we use it for washing dishes, washing clothes Basically, anything you want to wash, we use this soap for washing. So, guys, I've been making soap for many years. I think 10 years, but I've only done it for myself and for friends and family. I've never made soap for sale. So, you'll see this isn't perfectly uniformly cut. Most of this soap will be given away before this day is over. But, um, I am going to start making soap commercially for sale. I think after 10 years I know what I'm doing here. And I've never made fancy soaps though. Just your plain old non-colored soaps. I've made cold process, hot process, herbal. I've used uh, essential oils. I've done all that but I've never done the swirly colors. I'm not sure if I'm gonna. I'm gonna probably stick with a good old-fashioned natural soap with some scents and some herbs. But that having been said, very soon I will be making some soap making forms on video, so watch for that. And I will be making some soap cutting forms to get you this nice uniform cut rather than this eyed up and uh, sort of sloppy cutting. So we'll be doing that and uh, stay tuned for those videos. Making soap molds out of wood, the do-it-yourself soap molds at home out of wood and um, making soap cutting forms. See, you got this here is a square bar and it's not your typical standard commercial bar of soap. It's great for home use and all that, but it's not uh, your typical standard shape and size. Although I have seen homemade soaps in square like that. Anyway, stay tuned for some more exciting soap making videos and watch for the updates. I'll probably post in the comments and you'll see on the my daily videos, my normal daily videos, um, 
what I think of using the soap afterwards. So uh, check out my daily videos. My wife Melanie and I make videos of our daily life here in New Homestead, striving to become off the grid and self-sufficient on a budget. Thanks for watching. Troy from the Do It Yourself World and the Off Grid Project. Check the article links below.